the possible God of the miracle Oh, let your will be done We pray
Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. You are warmly welcome to our church service this morning here at Emmanuel Croydon. My name's Natasha. I'll be leading the service. And we have a guest speaker, Christian Sanna, who comes to us from New Life Christian Centre just down the road in Croydon. And Christian will be helping unpack the amazing story of the Transfiguration. Stu and Richard and the band and organ will be helping us with our song worship this morning. You're all really welcome, especially if you're joining online or watching a recorded, a recorded recording of this service. You are warmly welcome. And let's begin by reminding ourselves why we have come to church this morning. So it would be good to stand... And we will say our opening responses together as a reminder, actually what a privilege it is to be able to come to church in freedom and worship our good God. Let's say together. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. And what better way to start our service than by singing about the good things God has given us as believers. Has freed 
stands open to all the poor and the needy whoever shall call no sinner who comes seeking mercy today is ever by Jesus sent empty away great father down. Now, I wonder what makes you say, wow. Maybe, maybe, actually, I'm looking out on our diverse congregation, and I'm thinking, maybe wow is not a word that everyone uses. Maybe some people say, how marvelous. Or maybe you speak a different language, and you don't say wow at all when you're amazed by something. Maybe you say something different. But this word, wow, is a word that we will use when we are amazed by something, when something is awesome. I wonder what is the most beautiful, powerful, or awe-inspiring thing that you have seen recently that has made you say, wow. Let me show you some pictures of some of the things that make me say, wow. Sunsets. Sunsets make me say, wow. You know when the sky is painted in the brightest colors and it changes all the time. It's stunning. Wow. Babies, a new baby, wow. One week the mum's staggering along with her massive belly and the next week there's that beautiful, perfect baby. Wow, what a miracle. How about a tiger? A tiger makes me say, wow. A tiger is so incredible. Can I just say, all the animals are incredible. But look at that tiger. Look at its beautiful markings. Its power just lying dormant as it stares at us. Wow. And how about nature when we see something like this? This is actually a volcano. A volcano is amazing. It's standing there, huge, majestic, but that could erupt. Under the surface, there's that lava. And when you find out about this, it makes us say, wow. So these are all things that make me stop in my tracks and say, wow. Turn to the person next to you for one minute, tell them something amazing, beautiful or awe-inspiring that makes you say, wow. Okay, I am going to come and ask three people to give me examples. So if you've got something, put your hand up. Good, I'm glad you put your hand up. <laughs> Do you want to say what's amazing? Shh, let's listen, let's listen. What makes you say wow? Um, when we see a rainbow. Yes, when we see a rainbow, that's really good, well done. Someone else? Down here. Brilliant, Barry. A fish and bone cafe tail work in the flowers. Yeah, that's right. Amazing. Flowers are amazing. And anything else from this end? <laughs> A 
of propagating plants, just take a snippet and plonk it in some water and watch the root grow in a few days. Love it. We could keep going and going, couldn't we? And I'd love to, but I need to tell you about something. You see, one day, Jesus went for a walk with three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and they walked all the way up a mountain. And do you know what happened when they got up the top of the mountain? The Bible tells us that Jesus changed. Jesus' face changed. It tells us his face shone like the sun. Can you imagine? Shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Just for one second, look at that light, and then look away again. That's how Jesus became. He became like that. The disciples saw Jesus. The Bible uses this word glory. They saw Jesus in all his glory, and it was a massive wow moment for them. So up until that point, they'd been living alongside Jesus and seeing him do these amazing things, but they understood him to be a man like them. And when they went up the mountain, he changed, and they realized that he truly was and is the Son of God. Because not only did they see Jesus, wow, dazzling white, but they also heard God the Father speaking to them from behind a bright cloud, telling him Jesus was his son and they were to listen to him. As they came down the mountain later that day, they must have been thinking, oh, wow, just wow, we have seen God. They'd caught a vision of this God who's powerful, beautiful and righteous, and they'd seen how awesome he truly is. Now, you and I today, we are here to worship the same Jesus that the disciples met all those years ago, because he's alive and with us today by his Holy Spirit. I wonder if you are in awe of who Jesus really is. I wonder if we're in awe of our beautiful, powerful King, the one worthy of our worship, the one who was and is the Son of God. I wonder if we think about Jesus and exclaim, wow. One day the Bible tells us Jesus will return in all his glory, and we're going to see him on that day like the disciples did, and we will be bowing down to him in word day comes. Let's let all the beautiful things in the world around us make us go wow by drawing us into worshipping the one who made those things and who sent his son to show us what God is like. We're going to say a prayer now to our awesome God and at the end of each line I'd love you to say, awesome is the God we worship. So let's practice that together. Ready? Awesome is the God we worship. So I'm going to say a line, and then you're going to join me with that. Here we go. Praise the Lord of endless wonder. Awesome is the God we worship. Lord of lightning, Lord of thunder. Awesome is the God we worship. Lord of earth's remotest places, Awesome is the God we worship, Lord of heaven's cosmic spaces. Awesome is the God we worship, Lord of microscopic mystery. Awesome is the God we worship, Lord of time and Lord of history. Awesome is the God we worship, Lord beyond what eyes can see. Awesome is the God we worship, Hallelujah, Lord of me. Awesome is the God we worship. We are going to join together in song. That's right. Do you know what makes me go wow? Is God's goodness. God is good all the time. All the time. 
God is good. That's right. We're going to sing a song all about God's goodness. There's going to be some actions to this song. Joe's going to come and lead them for us. And if anybody else wants to come and lead the actions from the front, you're most welcome. Just make sure that you're all right to be on the live stream. Right. If you're willing and able, let's stand together. Here we are, here we are, people of faith, some with smiles, others with fears at their face, here we come, ready to bring who we are, God is good, God is good to us. Children of God, here we are, children of God, family, joining together as one, here we come, ready to sing who you are, God is good, God is good, God is good to us. Sing, oh, praise him. Oh, praise him, for he is good. Oh, praise him, for he is good. Oh, praise him, for he is good. Praise Well done. Do you take a seat? Amen. And I think a lot of us in all our lives can say God is good. I'm sure we can all think of one thing that we can say today, that God is good. And you're getting very good at the actions as well. So that's good as well. Um, I'm just very quickly going to share with you about the family Easter trail. Now, can you pray very hard that it's not weather like today? That's number one. Um, it will still go ahead if it's weather like today, but we'll need all our cagoules and we'll get very wet, but we'll have a great time too. Just to say, so two weeks on Easter Sunday, straight after the service, this is for everybody. Zero all the way up to 100 and plus. You can all get involved. And it's a family trail 
um, where families and older people, if you'd like to do it as well, can walk around the neighbourhood and there'll be um, the Easter story to kind of get involved in with lots of activities at different stations. It's a great thing to invite people with cause too because they'll be hearing the Easter story plus getting involved interactively in it. So thinking about it, maybe doing a logic puzzle, maybe doing a little film of the um, Barabbas shouting um, and, the, and, the, and the trial of Jesus. You know, different things along the way. And lots of people are getting involved, which is really great. And I thank you for that if you already ha are helping me in any way. So do come, do invite people to the service. It's an all-age service. And then this will be straight afterwards. I still just need a couple more people at the end, if this is something that you can do, you can have your coffee while you're doing it, is as the, as the children, as the families are coming back and they're showing you what they've done, just to kind of encourage them and say, yeah, that's really great. And maybe ask the question, what was your favorite part of the trail? How might you respond to that to get the questions going? So if you're someone who thinks they could do that with a cup of coffee in their hand in the center, then please come and see me, that'd be great. But looking forward to it. Great. Well, it is time for our children and young people and those in our Be Together group to leave us. If your child is three and under, there's a creche through here. If you are aged between three and 18, there are groups over the road. And if you have additional needs and would prefer a lower key service, that is also over the road. Have a wonderful morning. Good. Let me tell you about a few things that are happening in the life of our church. And if someone you came with has taken some children out, do fill them in when they come back. Next Sunday morning, our church will be transformed because there will be a baptismal pool up the front. We're so excited because we are going to be having nine baptisms and re affirmation of baptism vows next Sunday morning. So we're delighted to be welcoming these people as they take this step of faith. Do bring your friends, your family. It's going to be such a powerful service full of thanksgiving to God for the way he's been at work in these people's lives. And we just want to support them and show them our love and a deep time of fellowship as a church family as they commit to taking this step. So that's next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, as usual, our baptism services. On Wednesday evening, um, we will be having the final in our ancient prayer practice evenings. And this week, we are going to be focusing on centering prayer. If you've come along to these evenings, you will have found a place where you're given the opportunity to maybe take a different direction or go deeper in your prayer life. So I warmly recommend it. Come while you can. It's the last chance this Wednesday. Let me give you an overview of our Easter services. So Joe's already mentioned the family trail, but before that, Easter at Emmanuel starts on Thursday, Maundy Thursday, which is just before Good Friday, when we will be having a service here in church including feet washing. If you're wondering why we would be doing that, come along and find out the clues in the Bible. And it will be a time when we're able to just 
enjoy not only time with the Lord in a sort of more quiet, reflective way, but also a time for us as a church family to come together and say, yes, I want to live and serve alongside you. Good Friday, we have an all-age service here in church at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then in the afternoon we will have our Good Friday meditations, which will be a chance to reflect on what God, what Jesus did for us on Good Friday by dying on the cross, and that will be a church service with stillness and poetry and prayer and a cappella music. It will be beautiful. Do come along, two o'clock on Good Friday afternoon. And then on Easter Sunday, we have our all together service as usual at 10 o'clock. If you've been to our Easter morning services before, you know that they are a time of celebration as we remember what Jesus has done and how wonderful he is rising from the dead. This is the whole reason that we do what we do and we want to say hallelujah. And that's followed by the Easter family trail. And Easter Sunday evening, there is a service when we are looking at the confidence that we have in the resurrection. Again, a great service to invite friends along, particularly friends who've got questions, who'd like to know, why do you do what you do? What does that mean for me? Come along to that service, and I believe we will also have communion. Yes. Do take a March guide home with you and some information about those services, more information on the website. Stu. Thank you, Nat. We feel that it's really important for us as a church, Emmanuel, to sing songs that are written from within Emmanuel. We sing quite a lot of our own songs uh, here at Emmanuel, and not only do we sing them, but we record them and we release them. So you'll remember if this time, sort of this time last year, around May last year, we gathered here on a Friday evening and we recorded a whole live album. Wow, that was 18 songs that we're still mixing and mastering and getting through, but we're going to be releasing another single from that album on Good Friday. The song is It Is Finished. We've been singing it quite a lot here in the morning. Uh, and it's a great song of uh, celebration of Easter. What would, what would it be like if we were to say, It Is Finished? over everything that holds us back from being with the Lord. So that's what that song is all about. It's going to be out on all streaming services on Good Friday. I really encourage you to share it uh, far and wide so that we can get it out there and get the message of Emmanuel worship out there. Thanks. John. Come and challenge us. <laughs> yes, now just a quick message from me on behalf of Andrew Gillum. You may remember back in December, we started a 1K challenge. Uh, the objective here was to raise an additional £1,000 per week in order to deal with a shortfall that we have. Now, where did this come from? Well, we had a problem, a good problem. Next slide, please. Uh, a good problem because we managed to recruit uh, all the staff we wanted to uh, to our team, but now we have to pay for it, okay? So the first thing to say uh, is a big thank you. Next slide. Thank you to all of you who give regularly to our ministry. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without you. And it's a huge thing. When I tell other people that we, you know, we have over half a million uh, coming in each year uh, to actually sustain the ministry here, it's, it's incredible. So thank you to all of you who give. Uh, next slide, if I may. How have we responded? What's happened since uh, we launched that 1K challenge? Well. Um, if we look here, we've got the, uh, we were anticipating that grey line. We were anticipating going all the way through our reserves from the top all the way to the bottom in one year. And that's why we needed to respond. Where we've got to is we're probably going to end up where that blue line is. It's better than the grey, but it's not quite where we're aiming for, which is the black. We want to get into the middle of that reserves band by the end of the year. So we need to make up that little shortfall. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, actually, what we're left with is no longer trying to find £1,000 per week, but £1,000 per month, just an extra £250 per week. And if you're good at your maths, you can work out how that might break down. But the main thing I'd love to say to you is, could you uh, respond to that? If you've already contributed, thank you so much. If you haven't yet, uh, if you're a regular member of Emmanuel, and particularly this is for those who perhaps 
haven't even thought about their kind of financial giving in terms of being a member of Emmanuel, we'd love to hear from you. Um, there's details on our website under the Give button, or do come and approach me uh, or our treasurer, Andrew Gillam, and we can tell you more about that. Please do make sure that you fill in a gift aid form that enables us to ask the tax man for a bit, little bit of extra help that gets us all the way there. All right, if you need any more information, please don't hesitate uh, to get in touch. Thank you so much. Right, as I mentioned earlier, we are looking at the story of the transfiguration today. Uh, it's the time when Jesus was revealed in all his glory to his disciples, and Christian is going to be bringing that message to us in a little while. So we know from the Bible that Jesus' presence is like light, but I think we also all know that there are times when our lives feel as if they have places of darkness, sometimes that they are full of darkness, that there are things that we keep hidden from God and places that we don't want his light to come in. So we're going to spend a few moments before we pray in confession, just reflecting on the week that lies behind us and asking God to help us be brave enough to allow his light in. Let's pray together. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us then bring our secret sins into his light and confess them in penitence and in faith. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God cleanse us from sin and make us worthy of the kingdom of his glory. Amen. And we thank you, Father, that in the light of your forgiveness, which you delight to give us because it is the best thing we can receive, we bring our prayers to you now. Amen. Lucinda is going to come and lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Creator God, we pray for peace for our world. We pray for peace and reconciliation, particularly where there is violence, war and terror. We pray that you would speak peace to the heart of your world. In the midst of all tumult, may your world find the peace and calm which passes all understanding and which only you can give. We ask you for peace in our lives too. We particularly pray for Jeff Draper, Alison Penny and all their family as they grieve Helen and for her funeral this week. May they and all who mourn know your peace, your love and comfort. Let us be peacemakers, more ready to call people friends than enemies, more ready to trust than to mistrust more ready to love than to hate, more ready to respect than to despise, more ready to serve than be served. We come into your holy presence and rest in your embrace. You are almighty God, creator of heaven and earth and the universe around us, author of wonder, beauty and truth. You are our provider, you are our healer. You are powerful and faithful, our peace, our shepherd, 
our righteousness. You are the God who sees. As we draw close to you, almighty Father, restore us to you. Clothe us with strength and dignity. Equip us to be patient and kind. Help us to love with humble and gentle hearts. This spring, as the days lengthen and we spend longer in the light, may we spend longer in your presence. May our response to your word be a visible declaration of your lordship in our lives. Let us adore you, God. May our apathy, our resentment and our coldness vanish before the beams of your brightness. We pray that we will be led and motivated by your spirit. Fill us with your holy love and open to us the treasures of your wisdom. May we live in and live out your peace. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you so much, Lucinda. We're going to sing together again. Let me just read you the third verse of this next hymn. It's absolutely beautiful. It says this. We see his shining splendor in every sunless place where Christ, the light of nations, appears in truth and grace. Transfigured by his likeness, we make the vision known, reflecting in our faces the radiance of his own. The Lord's transfiguration gives us something to do. We have to do something about it. The responsibility is on us to share his grace, his word, his life. So let us stand together. Amen. Please do take a seat. And I would love to invite Peter up here, who's going to read our Bible reading for us. Thanks, Peter.
morning folks. Well, we've got a real wow reading for you this morning. <clears throat> Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, reading from verse 2. For those of you who like to read in the Pew Bibles, it's page 1022. So that's Mark 9, verse 2. <clears throat> After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead really meant. And they asked him, why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah does come first and restores, and restores all things. Why then is it written that the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected? This is the word of the Lord. So as I mentioned, we're delighted to have our friend Christian here this morning, Christian Sanna. And Christian, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are? Sure. I've just said who you are, but you know, what Indeed. you do for a living. Indeed. So my name is Christian, and uh, I am uh, from Croydon, of course. And uh, what do I do? So I uh, work part-time for New Life Christian Centre. Uh, I'm also a singer, and uh, my background is working in HR, people management. <laughs> nice. And so that's my kind of brief background of what I nice. do. Nice. And what do you do at New Life? So I work uh, with uh, Connect Groups, so I kind of oversee the Connect Group structure at New Life. And so, so like home groups? Home groups, and uh, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. Good job. Indeed. Um, Christian, we're talking today about this amazing, awesome God we've got. When is the time for you when you first realized that God is awesome? I think maybe at the, around the age of 11, I had, uh, you know, raised in a Christian home. And then my mother, uh, who was a very, very strong, who is a very strong uh, uh, Christian, uh, really was, you know, prayer or hear her pray, you know, in the, in the night and sometime in, you know, early in the morning, I think, you know, really just kind of that, that influence, you know, began to impact me, I would say, by the age of 11, where I was able to really see, oh, wow, you know, this is more than just the, the fact that we go to church, that Jesus is actually a person. He is, a, you know, a person that can be loved and who loves me. And, and really, I think that really began my relationship with with this wow effect of Jesus, I would yeah, say. <laughs> yeah, very good. So how do you think living day to day in Croydon, which, let's be honest, is a little bit wet and gray and bleak mm -hmm. at times, most of the time, how do you find awe in your day to day life? How do I find awe in, I think, you know, once again, it's really going to find the, it's the small things uh, in your, including God in everything that you do and seeing him through everything that you do. Uh, and I think one way that I do that is, you know, in the morning, I, I, I try to start my day off with uh, speaking to him. Mm -hmm. And I think that tends to generally, I would say, sensitize my heart uh, to his wonders. And therefore, I, I tend to be more aware of uh, him mm -hmm. all throughout the day. So I would say that's really uh, my, my, 
my, my, my access to the wow, wow factor. Very good, very good. Well, I'm gonna pray for you in a sec. Yes. Do you wanna tell us why you're wearing a cap? Oh, absolutely. So I, so <laughs> I did mention, you know, cause generally I don't wear a hat. So I had a little minor um, procedure in the back of my head. So that's the reason why I'm wearing a hat. I generally don't wear a hat when I'm preaching. And so it's just for today. So I hope you can excuse me and you can forgive me. Is that okay? <laughs> We're delighted to have you, Christian. Thank you. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to hear from Christian today. Would you help our hearts be soft and our ears be open? And would you give him words that come from you? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to, to share God's word with you. And um, this morning, as I said, I've been given the privilege of being able to share from Mark chapter 2. Okay, let me just get my, here we go. Yeah, and so basically to share from Mark chapter 9, from verse 2 to 12. And so that's my assignment this morning. And so, yes, a bit, a bit like uh, Natasha said, uh, I am from Croydon, you know, and so I am uh, specifically from uh, uh, West Croydon, the best part of Croydon. And so, <laughs> you know, the best part of Croydon. But, you know, it's an honor this morning to be able to spend time with you and uh, to spend, uh, uh, you know, time with, uh, with your church, your wonderful leadership, John, and, uh, you know, John and Stuart and everybody. So really, really appreciate this opportunity to be able to share God's word. And so this morning, my, my, my focus, and I think, you know, what kind of like my, my, my focus this morning is really kind of taken off from this, uh, from this amazing chapter. Or shall we say this amazing, uh, amazing passage? You see, have you ever tried to explain something to someone? Or maybe you, you, you're trying to, to explain, for those of you who are teachers, maybe you would understand this, you're trying to explain a great concept to someone, but it just seems like they don't seem to get it. You know, or maybe some of you are parents who are uh, parents of teenagers, uh, you're trying to teach your child to clean their rooms. And it, it seems like, you know, well, no matter how much you tell them to clean their room, they just don't understand the concept of what it means to have a clean and tidy room. You, you, can, uh, you can agree to that. You see, and so basically, you know, sometimes you, you will go and, 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 and you, will do, you will go to great lamps and great measures to really try to get this concept into the head. And so maybe you, you may use illustrations. Uh, you, you, you will take away things and say, if you don't clean your room, I will take away your phone. And, and maybe you, you try to go to these great lamps to, to use objects to, to try to teach them a lesson, but it just doesn't seem, for, it doesn't seem like, you know, they really understand it. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, to, 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 to kind of really help them understand and to grasp the lesson or this thing that you're trying to tell them, you will maybe go to the lamps of being able to actually do the things yourself so they can see you do it, right? And maybe you would do, you, you, you would take them to a place and you would take them to experience something that would give them a real life situation of what it is uh, that you're trying to teach them. You see, in our scripture passage today, I think it's important that we understand that, you know what, the book of Mark, or shall we say the gospel of Mark, Jesus has been trying to tell the disciples this one amazing thing. So when you really, really, really look at the, the, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Mark is in so much focus, I would say, on the works of Christ. Because oftentimes in the, in, 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 in the gospel of Mark, you will see the gospel and the works of Christ portrayed, his miracles, his power, everything else that, 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 that Jesus wanted to reveal is revealed, I would say, more so in the gospel of Mark. And so Jesus has, been, has spent time with the disciples for about three years and is nearing maybe the end, is, is, is nearing the end of his, uh, his time on earth. And he has tried to try to get this concept to the, to the disciples. But although the disciples could understand and could have a, had a concept of who Jesus was, they only had a slight, and I would say, you know, a partial understanding of who it was that was actually walking on earth with them. They only had a partial understanding of Jesus, uh, of his nature and his power and his ability. Now, Jesus, uh, in his uh, 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 amazing and wanting to help his disciples really to grasp the person who, the, the person of, of who he was, uh, Jesus decided to take uh, three of his main uh, disciples uh, to the mountain. And this is, of course, uh, James, John, and Peter. These are the future leaders of the church, and he wanted to give them a real-life experience of what it is 
of who he was to reveal himself to them. I would say, you know what, it's important for us to understand that every work, every miracle, every signs and wonders, everything that Jesus performed in the word of God had one thing in mind. He had one goal in mind, and that was to reveal his nature to them. The miracles were not even the goal. The signs and wonders were not even the goals. Everything else that he did was not even the goal. But the goal that Jesus was trying to get across to his disciples primarily was who he was. Not only his humanity, but I would say his divinity. And Peter, when you would read the, you would read the, 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 the previous scriptures, you would understand that Peter, Peter began to get this understanding. He confessed to Jesus as uh, the Son of God. So he began to get this understanding. But just a couple of verses after that, he reverted back to saying, well, Jesus, we don't want you to go to, 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 we don't want you to, go to, 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 to the cross. We don't want you to, 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 you know, to, to having to endure such uh, uh, you know, pain that you're going to be suffering. So Peter, although he began to understand Jesus, he really did not understand the full understanding of who Jesus was and in his purpose. And so Jesus, in his attempt to try to make Peter or try to make his disciple to understand, he took him to the mountain of transfiguration. And at the mountain of transfiguration, he revealed himself to them in a way that they have never seen him before. They had never imagined this Jesus, this Jesus that they would sit with, this Jesus whom they had spent time with, this Jesus whom they had, uh, uh, you know, loved and had befriended, this Jesus who became a close friend. And yet when they arrived at the mountain, this was another Jesus. It was totally a different person. Although they could relate to him, although they knew this was Jesus, but it was another dimension of Jesus that they had never understood and under, uh, uh, come in, in contact with. You see, I'm convinced the greatest need of our time, and I'm convinced the greatest need of believers of Christ in this moment is a fresh vision and a fresh revelation of Jesus Christ. I really believe everything else, and please, I've just said, I said a fresh revelation. I didn't say a new revelation or a new vision of Jesus. I said a fresh revelation. Why? Because I think that's important. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. But it is important for us as believers to have to enter this moment where we are constantly in awe of this Jesus in whom we serve. It's very easy for us to become a mundane in our walk with God. It is very easy for us to walk with Jesus just like the, the, the disciples. They befriended Jesus. They loved the Jesus. They knew who Jesus was. But yet they began to miss the full, uh, the, the, the full magnitude or the magnitude of who this amazing person was, Jesus Christ. And therefore Jesus, in his attempt to seek to reveal himself to the disciples, he took them to the high mountain. And as I said, you know, I believe the greatest need for the believer in our time, it is what? Is to have a fresh revelation of Jesus. It is one thing to be a believer. It is one thing to come to church. It is one thing to be able to get used to the things that we do. Prayer, reading our Bibles, that's wonderful. But the problem is, is that we can, become so, uh, we can become so used to that that we lose the awe of who God is. You see, something about familiarity is that often as we live and often as we engage in things and often as we get used to things, we could lose the awe effect of who God truly is. And I think it's important for us to understand this. So I'm going to take a little bit, you know, a few th principles and a few thoughts uh, that I have taken from this passage that I want us to look at this uh, morning. The Bible declares that God or Jesus led the disciples to a high mountain. And I like the Bible because when I read the Bible, I'm not sure about you, I read the Bible ensuring that uh, I take it slow because I think sometimes it's important sometimes to read the Bible so, so you can understand it. The Bible says a high mountain, not just a mountain. Why a high mountain? The Bible says he led the disciples to a high mountain. Now, when you study the Bible, you will understand that the, the mountain or mountains represents uh, the presence of God. In the Bible, mountains represented places where sacrifices were made. 
Mountains represented places of encounters. Moses encountered God on the mountain. You know, you look at uh, God perform amazing wonders and signs and wonders on the mountain when Elijah performed, uh, you know, this great show of power of God's strength. Where was it? In a, on the mountain. So Jesus take these disciples on the mountain. As a matter of fact, when you read the passage in the book of Luke, it specifically says that they went up to the mountain to pray. So the mountain here reflects, speaks to us uh, of the place uh, of prayer. And I really do believe in order for us to be able to remain and to keep this awe of Jesus, in order for us to, to, to sustain this awe of who Jesus is, we must engage and understand that we must leave the, the bottom of the mountain and get up to the mountain and seek God. And it's amazing when you read that scripture, the Bible says, it says, he took them to a higher mountain by themselves. And another, another, another translation says that he took them to the mountain alone. What does that mean? Solitude. Time that you have to come upon by yourself to seek God, to seek to, to, to reignite this awe of this God in whom we serve, that he's not just another one of, of our friends, or maybe he's not just another great personality, he's not just another prophet, as some would say, he's not just Moses or Elijah. No, this is the very Son of God. The Bible says that he took him to a very high mountain to pray. And as they arrived on the mountain to pray, the Bible declares that he face transfigured. He changed. He transformed. And as a matter of fact, when you read also the, 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 the Luke's account of the gospel, the Bible says that he, uh, 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 that, that as he prayed, it, it uses exactly these words, as he prayed, his face became a shining or as he prayed, he changed. And I really do believe that in order for us to remain in this, to have and to maintain this awe of Jesus, we must engage in a place of prayer. We must engage in a place where we are, we, as we behold him and as we are communing with him, we are asking God, oh, Father, open my eyes to behold the wonder of Jesus. Don't allow my, 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 my eyes, my natural eyes to blind me to the wonder of the one who remains and sits and who reigns above the heavens and, and the earth. It is important for us, by the grace of God, to remain and to have that effect, to have to, 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 to ask God to give us this awe of Jesus as we prayed. I'm going to use a few, the, the remaining time that I have, to tell you a little bit what a fresh vision or a fresh revelation of Jesus would do based on our scripture in the name of Jesus Christ. The first revelation of Jesus that we see from the scripture that we read, the Bible declares, it says, his clothes, his clothes became shining exceeding white like snow, such as no laundress on earth can whiten them. You see, this reveals us something which is quite key. I believe this reveals the purity that every time we come in contact with Jesus, every time he is revealed to us, the Bible declares that this reveals to us the purity and the righteousness of this Jesus in whom we serve. It is very easy as we serve Jesus to forget how pure he is. It is very easy as we serve and love Jesus and walk with Jesus to forget how righteous he is. And the Bible declares that his clothes became white, such as no laundress on earth that can whiten him. What does that mean? It means that the righteousness that he possesses cannot, it, it basically was given to me, he said, the heavenly righteousness. And my encouragement here and the lesson that I learned from this is that this Jesus who is righteous, this Jesus who, whose clothes became white that no laundry on earth can cleanse is the same one who is able to wash our sin and make it white as snow as the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. It says this, it says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sin are like scarlet, this says they shall be white as snow. And so for what we know is that as we receive and as we contemplate and as we receive a fresh revelation of Jesus, what does that do to us? It cleanses us. It breaks down the fabric of sin. It breaks down our habits. It breaks down the, the struggles 
those, and maybe even maybe the sins in our life. Why? Because, because his righteousness uh, becomes our righteousness through a union that makes us become righteous in his sight. So his righteous, as his clothes became white, when we stand before God uh, through Jesus Christ, uh, God sees us uh, as perfectly righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that excite you? You see, the blood of Jesus has the power to break down every fabric of sin and make us whiter than snow. God desires to cleanse us. God desires to impart his righteousness to us. As the Bible says also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to uh, uh, chapter uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, he says, he says, because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. And therefore, Jesus Christ has become almost the one who sanctifies us. As we contemplate and as we behold Jesus Christ, we become like him and we take his righteousness. The second thing I want to look at this morning that we receive as we have and as we, uh, 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 you know, as we contemplate on Jesus, this fresh revelation of Jesus, what does this do to us? It reveals God's authority and God's power over life and death. We must not forget that the Jesus in whom we serve has total authority over life and death. Understand this, as Jesus was praying, the Bible says that Elijah and Moses showed up, and Elijah and Moses became, I call it, you know, appeared. If you know anything, of course, in the Bible, is that Elijah or Moses had died about 1,700 years prior to this. And Elijah died about a thousand years after this. As Jesus was praying, what happened? The Bible declares that Moses and Elijah appeared. What is that? That basically tells me is that Jesus had the power to summon a meeting and say, you know what, come from wherever you are, because at this time, understand that Elijah and Moses were not in heaven yet. Why? Because Jesus was not yet risen. And therefore, it meant that they were still in a place where God had kept, kept, kept righteous souls. And so God brought back Elijah and Moses back to life for the sake of a meeting with Jesus Christ. This tells me something, that Jesus Christ has total power over life and death. And I want to encourage you today that the Bible declares and calls him the right, the, the, the resurrection and the life. And the Bible declares, it says, he who believes in me will live even though he dies. And therefore, Christ does not only give life, he also sustains a life. I want to encourage you today. There may be certain areas of your life where you may see that the, you, you, you may feel like something has died. You may feel like maybe a dream has died. You may feel like the circumstances of your life or maybe something that God had promised you or maybe something that you, 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 you whatever it is, your relationship, uh, uh, maybe going through a divorce and you feel like that situation has died. I want to encourage you that if Jesus was able to summon Elijah and Moses who had died thousands years be, uh, before to back to life, uh, God, can bring back to, be, God can bring back to life uh, whatever is dead in your life. Do you believe that in the name of Jesus? For the remaining time that I have, I think I have a couple of minutes. I just want to finish this. Jesus, the third thing that we see as we contemplate and as we behold and as we seek a fresh revelation of Jesus, this revelation, this is what the revelation of Jesus will do for you. The revelation of Jesus will reveal to you the mind of God. Verse 7 of our scripture says, it says, A cloud came and overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, It says, This is my beloved son. Hear him. You see, in our day and age and in this generation, there's so much noise. Everything, everyone has something to say. Social media, the news, the experts, this person said this. This is the next thing you need to do. The, the health, I mean, there's so much to hear. And to be honest with you, we can get so much conf we can get so confused because there's so much things that are coming into our ear, and we are we are almost like you know who do I believe? Who do I who do I listen to? But the Bible says that there is one voice that you and I ought to listen to, and we cannot afford to ignore. And the Bible declares that's the voice of Jesus. It says that this is my beloved son. 
It's not Moses, it's not Elijah. It is not the great men of the Bible. It says there's one man. All the, the, the Old Testament prophets, all the, 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 the law and whatever the, the God had spoken to in the Old Testament had one message and that was Jesus. And so when Jesus appeared, I'm going to finish now, and when Jesus appeared, he had one thing in mind to speak to us the mind of God. So whenever God, you hear God speak, whenever God speaks through his word, what does he do? He speaks the mind of God. If you want to know anything and you want to know the mind of God in a subject, please find the thoughts of God, which is the word of God in scriptures. Jesus Christ reveals the mind of God. For the last minute that I have, the last thing that Jesus reveals according to this passage is that Jesus reveals a life's essential. What does that mean, Jesus reveals a life essential? The verse, verse 8 says, it says, that Suddenly when they looked around and they saw no one anymore, but only Jesus with themselves. So Moses appeared, Elijah appeared, all this great glory uh, uh, encircled them. And the Bible declares that after all that had passed, the only person that was standing with them was Jesus. I want to encourage you. When you strip life at its bare minimum, you know what you have? is Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you in everything that you do, seek a greater revelation of Jesus Christ, love him, honor him, and desire to behold his glory. And I trust God that even as you behold him, you will see these things work out in your life. Let's just pray. I know my time is over and let's just close our eyes. I want you for a minute to think, take a moment to reflect. What have we allowed in our lives that have obstructed our, our vision of Jesus? Could these be challenges, relationships, work, or even perhaps Christian activities that have blinded our eyes to this ama amazing and wonderful and powerful Jesus? Think about that. I pray that God, in Jesus' name, you will open our eyes to behold once again the wonders of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Blessings to you guys in Jesus' name. Wow. Thank you so much, Christian. Thank you so much. It strikes me, everyone, that we need to take a minute. Dinner might be on, lunch might be calling, but we need to take a minute. So I'm going to encourage us in prayer to petition the Lord for this fresh revelation and fresh vision of Jesus. This might be the first time that you've had a fresh revelation and a fresh vision of Jesus. This might be the hundredth time, but it is no less good. It is no less meaningful. Do you know what? I'm actually going to encourage us. Ian, would you put us in some evening service lighting? Just turn, just turn the lights down. This isn't to force anything. This isn't to... Uh, it's just to allow us the space. It's just to encourage us in this space of prayer. And then we're going to sing a couple of songs. I'm going to invite you to stay seated for the first one and invite you to stand for the second. But let's just take a bit of time first. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on this place. Yes, Lord, give us a fresh revelation. A fresh vision of ye. Holy Spirit. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, 
for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to you. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. This is all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. But it's all about you. It's all about you. If we have our prayer ministry people, if they can be over there in the back corner. And if anybody wants to pray with the prayer ministry people, that's, this is a great time to do it. i 
about you. Should we stand together as we turn our eyes upon Jesus? upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. Come on, raise it up for Jesus. That's right. 
We turn our eyes to you, Lord. Hold us unwaveringly on your beautiful, marvelous, majestic, good face. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. If you would like someone to pray with you about anything at all, if you are carrying something heavy, if you long to find out more about this Jesus that we're so excited about, then please do come and speak to one of us, Stu, myself, Christian. It would be a delight and honor, John, or do go for prayer ministry. It would be our delight to pray with you, to introduce you to Jesus. Please do also come and join us over the road in the Rock Cafe, where you can have a cup of tea and coffee and have the opportunity to meet each other. Let me close with a final blessing. Glory to God, whose power at work among us here this morning can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus 